Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now today we are going to embark on a year-round journey where all of the troubles of the world will be washed away as we discover how landscape photography can transform the ordinary into the extraordinary and leave us with a deep sense of meaning and fulfillment. Let's go. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Right, let's get out there and do some landscape photography. And if you've just picked up a new camera for Christmas, or you're just starting out, then this video will be perfect for you. If you're a regular viewer, you may have seen some of this before, but I know some of you are not getting notified about my videos. So make sure you've subscribed, hit that notification bell, and I'm certain there is something in here for everyone. So sit back, relax, and let's begin. I'm hoping that if I just continue along this path in that kind of direction, then I'll link up with this path around here. As ever, I am not very fit. And I know that on a video a little while ago, I asked you to hold me to account if I wasn't getting out there onto the hill doing landscape photography. And the last few videos have all been indoors. <laughs> so someone did call me out or held me to account and I appreciate that very much. Although I have been out, I just haven't been filming everything. I'm finding it tough. I'm finding it tough making these videos out and about because it's a lot of work by yourself and I need some help. So I'm trying to rediscover, or not rediscover because I never lost it, but reinvigorate my passion for landscape photography because I've got to be honest, it has been waning a little bit of late, pretty much since last summer. I think I've made some nice pictures in that time, but the motivation to actually go out has been low. So what I have done recently is made my studio less comfortable because I'd made it really cozy, my guitar's in there, there's a sofa in there, it's nice and warm, there's good coffee and it's, too, it's basically too comfortable. It's a little sanctuary, a little man cave that I made for myself and I think it's killed my creativity a little bit or killed my edge, I want my edge back and I think that comes from having a bit of discomfort in your life. So I'm artificially reintroducing that. Got rid of the sofa and I've put a weight bench up. So as part of this push to get fit, instead of sitting down and having a rest, I'm gonna lift. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. Whether that pans out, I don't know. But I have lost about a stone in weight over the last couple of months. So things are going in the right direction. I just need my creativity and my motivation to get out and do this kind of thing and on days like today it's pretty easy because it's absolutely stunning ah. and I'm hoping for a nice sunset a bit of high altitude cloud around oh so I think I'm, I'm quite excited if I'm honest I think it's gonna be good Ah, right, I've run into more trouble now. The path has come to an end. Everything is now fenced off. And it's because of a problem that's been happening in a large, in a lot of places all across England particularly. And that is landowners and farmers probably in this case, shutting off pathways and shutting off access to particular bits of land. And it's very, very, very frustrating. When you think about it, in England, you actually have very little access to most of the land. You drive down any A road and stop and you almost certainly can't go off the road to the side in many places. A lot of it's farmland, a lot of it's private woodland. There aren't actually that many places you can stop and go to. National parks are obviously great but I'm in a national park now and it's still shut off. And I'm running out of time as well. I think I can go around and up but the sun is getting lower in the sky <sighs> so I don't quite know what to do. If I'd come a little bit earlier, it wouldn't be an issue. I'd go around. Ah, so frustrating.
Right, I am now set up. I am absolutely buzzing because this is just so beautiful. That sun on my face feels so good. These are the moments that matter. When that light is low and it's warm and hitting the landscape like this, it's so exciting. It's what landscape photography is all about. These fantastic little moments when it all comes together. I'm at f11, 125th of the second, ISO 100. Don't really care about the settings right at this moment. I've tried a few different compositions because I like the wider vista. It looks good, but I think the subject is the hill and the tree. So I'm kind of using those at different points on the rule of th vertical rule of thirds. I do like that tree over there. So I've gone for something a little bit wider as well. I'm just going to keep shooting because the light's just looking so good. I'm focusing on the tree. Ah, oh, and when when it appears on the back of the screen, it's just absolutely fantastic. It's so warm, it's so lovely. There's some beautiful detail in those clouds behind the hill and that warm light coming in from the side just sets this whole thing alive. I particularly like the effect the light is having on this winter heather and the grasses that are growing up through it, catching those bits of golden light. Just so exciting. <laughs> It's funny because I've been struggling, like I said, with my photography recently. I think part of that is because it's some of the stuff I was talking about with the AI the other week is there's just so much of it now. There's so much great photography that you see online that that massive supply of it sometimes feels too much. So I've stopped looking at social media as much because it's overwhelming and it puts me off like actually going out and creating my own stuff. It's in why, and it's why I'm so, I'm so engaged and so, sure that printing is the way forward to A, to produce your work and to look at it as well, to absorb other people's work. Maybe it's not even about the final image. Maybe it's about getting out into nature and connecting with nature and using your camera and your photography to deepen that connection with nature and hopefully to then share and promote that connection with other people who need it in their lives. If you can get outside and re-attach yourself to intrinsic things that are real, like nature, you will feel good. The light's starting to fade now. <laughs> I'm gonna take one more. Just wow, I absolutely love this. I absolutely love it. So nice, and like I said, completely to myself. Ah, I'm pumped. <laughs> right, I'm into position, and it's just absolutely stunning. The light. It's beautiful and, if you can see, it's just started raining. Which is very exciting because with the quality of that light behind me there, there's surely going to be a rainbow. Surely somewhere. The sun's got to be at back, hasn't it? So, it's going to be over here if it's coming from somewhere. Up over this little hill. To the hills over there. Sun in my face now. And it should be where you're looking behind me. I don't think there's quite enough rain yet though, but who cares when the light is of that quality. So exciting. But the, uh, the main attraction for me today is the view this way. Looking over that scene there, looking over the town, looking towards the mountains. Ah, something really good could happen when the sun goes down. When I think back to the frustration I was feeling at the start of this shoot to now, it's absolute medicine doing this. It really is. A complete and utter natural high. Look at the light down there now. I'm gonna have a little shoot around, take my time, enjoy the moment, wait for sunset, have a little sit down I think as well.
With all the fitness I've been doing, the back is just about holding up. It's a bit sore right now though, so I'm gonna go and have, oh, go and have a little lie down, I think. <laughs> So as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And in my opinion, Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to build their website. And what a great project it would be to build a website going into 2024 so you can display your images in the most beautiful way possible. Because on social media these days, it's just a bit miserable to do, but when you control everything on your own website and present your work exactly how you vision, it's just it was such a fulfilling, rewarding experience. And it's also so easy to do with Squarespace. Start with one of their fantastic templates, put a few of your images and some of your words on there. And before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. Squarespace grows with you as well, which is a good thing. You can start with a very simple gallery presenting your images, big, bold, and beautiful. And then if you want to, you can upgrade it to an online store to start selling things like books, prints, cards, calendars, anything thing your brain can imagine. They also now have a member section where you can run a subscription service to and charge people for your content and keep them coming back to your website time and time again. That's just as easy to do as well. They've got award-winning customer service. I have used them for many, many years now and I've never looked back. And the most important thing as well, you don't need any technical knowledge. It's just, if you can drag boxes around on Windows, you can build a Squarespace website and it will all look perfect on whichever screen the person is viewing it on. And going into 2024, that is a very important thing because we're all looking at websites on our phones. So go to squarespace.com or click the link down below to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've built, use the offer code FIRSTMAN. Tell them I sent you there because that helps me out and you'll get 10% off your first purchase as well. Yeah, give it a go, you won't regret it. So I'm set up for another shot with the tide coming in to get me as I'm focused in on these little set of rocks here to make another really nice, long, exposure, moody image of this beach. But one of the other problems with trying to make unique images is that it can very quickly become some sort of originality purity test, especially when we start comparing online. Comparison is absolutely the thief of joy and if we start getting into these debates online it just becomes a race to the bottom and it doesn't lead to anywhere good and I think this is summed up in two conversations I've just had with some of the really nice people around here one guy up on the cliff walked past me saw all my camera gear and he said good luck getting a good shot today I mean he clearly isn't a photographer he probably has never seen one of the sort of ethereal, moody, dramatic images that I'm taking today. And that's the point, isn't it? Is that we're not making, or you shouldn't, I don't think, be making photographs for other photographers. That audience that it's gonna find probably isn't a photographer. It's gonna be someone like the guy up there who lives locally to here, who's never seen that a picture like that before, who sees it with the first time and just thinks, oh, wow, I love that. What a great photographer that Adam is. The second conversation I then had was with a lady that is still walking off in the distance over there. She was a little bit more interested in what I was doing because she has recently bought a new camera, just a little one, just a little DSLR. She's at that very early stage of her photography journey, which is brilliant. She's inspired by this scenery and she just wants to make pictures. We've got to go through that learning process from imitation to integration to innovation it's important and this kind of originality purity test that sometimes becomes a thing can be really off-putting so i'm gonna 
create an image now that is going to be original. It's original because I'm photographing water. It's always going to be different. I'm sure that rock there has been photographed a million times. I photographed it before in sunny conditions with birds on top of it. I just want to make a nice image. And if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, move on. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Right, I'm getting, I'm getting wound up. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I just love photography and I love seeing other people do it. I love seeing the images. It's all just great. Whoa, some great waves going on here. Right, I'm going for the long exposure again. I've got the six stop one in this time because I want some detail in the waves. It's a kind of, oh yes. It's a, what is it? I'm at F11, ISO 200, which will then give me a shutter speed of just around a second. And that's gonna give me some detail in the water as it is <laughs> blasting over that rock there. Just about getting the timing right, I think. So this is it. Timer right, two second timer and bang. Yes, <laughs> ah, that's a lot of fun. I don't care if it's original or not. I'm gonna edit it with my Moody Beach preset, which I guess, again, is goes against originality and uniqueness using presets, but I don't care, it's a style I like. This is the image, I hope you enjoy it. briefly before I do the last little bit to the top. The excuse is that I need a time lapse. But talking about the concept of heroes, it applies obviously, most obviously, to people as well. Now, do you remember Paul G. Johnson? He's my hero. <laughs> I've not seen him for a while though, and I don't think he's been seen on YouTube for some time. I hope he's doing okay. But one time we were out together in the Lake District and kind of sharing a little bit of my anxiety with him. I sort of said this, people at the top echelon of landscape photography, people like Charlie Waite, would never really want anything to do with me. Some kid who went to a hey, school in working class red car and would maybe not have so much in common with those types of people. But strangely, later that day, probably about half an hour later in fact, I got an email from managing director of Light and Land asking me to come to London to meet Charlie Waite because they wanted to work with me which I ended up doing then for a few years although I don't do tours anymore but that was mind-blowing going down to London and meeting him I was meeting one of my heroes and he turned out just to be a really genuine guy when I first started working with him they wanted me to go and along and to go on one of the tours that the other leaders were running so I kind of <laughs> said that the tour that Joe Cornish was leading would be a good one because he'd been a hero of mine for so long since I was young because he's very famous for photographing the area where I grew up. I went down to the Peak District where I am now in fact and sort of invited myself along on his recce <laughs> which felt a bit cheeky at the time and probably probably was but he was very gracious very welcoming. We parked up and he sort of looked at me and said, uh, just so you know, I move fairly fast around the hill. <laughs> and I'll never forget that because it made me super nervous. And to be honest, I've struggled with fitness over the years since I injured my back. But uh, being about 25 years older than me, I thought there's no way I can show any sign of weakness here. So I powered it up the hill behind him and just about made it. <laughs> but I think elevating anyone to that kind of level doesn't do anyone justice. It doesn't do anything good for you. And it certainly doesn't do anything good for them because they are just a person. And if you meet your heroes and they're great, it's probably just because they're a good person. If you meet your heroes and they're a complete cock, it's probably because they're just generally a complete cock. But in my case, everyone that I've met in photography who I've looked up to has been so gracious and so generous with their time and supporting and I just love it. But I often think back to that occasion, particularly recently, in that being fit and being able to hike up that mountain without too much trouble is an important part of being good 
at landscape photography, at least if you want to go exploring anyway. And that's certainly the type of landscape photography I, I like doing. So I've been working hard on my fitness recently. I'm still struggling because of my back, but I'm just about keeping it going. I've lost now over two stone, which I'm feeling good about. Getting up here has been a little bit easier, but the mental boost that that's given me is really powerful. I'm ready for the image. I'm ready for the shot, if it happens. But whilst I've been sitting here, it's given me some time to think. And I got contacted the other day by a veteran who had served in Iraq in 2003 and had suffered terrible PTSD and still does and tried to commit suicide several times. He'd found my videos and they'd inspired him and encouraged him to continue doing photography. And he said that photography has basically saved him because he can go out, get that exercise, be creative. And it's one of the only times he can forget the trauma that he witnessed and that he suffered. It's brought him back from the precipice. They are the real heroes. Yes, veterans, but also people that struggle day in, day out with genuine trauma. People that show courage and bravery in the face of really difficult things and things that cause a lot of fear. People that can overcome the odds and survive and press on and keep going and show that resilience. They've served their country. They've served their community. They're the, the people that are quiet about it. They're the real heroes. They're not the ones making a big song and dance about it. And those people inspire me. But we can't all be like that, can we? We've just got to get on with our own lives. And that's the thing as well. I think you've got to be the hero in your own story. And for me, tonight, on this edge, looking at where the sun is, somewhere behind that cloud, I feel very grateful for being able to do this. The power of photography, it is absolutely inspiring, even on days when it doesn't quite work out. Right, I've made it to the top and I've got fantastic views all the way around me. What started off as a wet and blustery, windy, wild day has just turned into the most perfect evening. There is now not a breath of wind, but I've just got a feast of photography at the moment. It's difficult to know what the right thing to do is. What I am going to do is camp up there somewhere but i think for the last light of the day i'm going to utilize this because it just looks fantastic and i've got this little bit of water down here now on the drone footage you've just seen it was obviously really nice and sunny and i took a few images but i was really struggling with the composition partly because this bit just down here is really muddy so the left hand side of this little pond looks rubbish it looks dirty and disgusting and i don't want it in my frame but then to get the balance with the mountains in the background I kind of need that area of the foreground in it I think I've now figured it out but of course the light has gone for a minute <sighs> just need the light to come back which it is starting to do it's looking fantastic over there I might put the long lens on in a second as well but I'm playing around and just doing the best I can in the circumstances so I think probably by the end of this I'll be able to show you two or three images that I've captured and you can let me know which one you like best down in the comments so I'm going to do it now because the light has come back quite nicely. Oh, actually that does, I think, look, oh yes. The sky looks delicious. It looks absolutely delicious. <laughs> just look at the tops of that mountain now, just fantastic. I'm going to put the long lens on, I'll show you a series of images, and then we'll go and find a, a spot to camp. Ah, yes, I love photography when it's like this, and it's the fact I can stay here right until the end without having to worry about getting back down off the hill, camping on your own and doing photography. There is nothing better. Ah, oh, it feels good. Yes.
I am at the very top of this hill now. Let's just uh, do that as you can see. But as ever, the weather is unpredictable in the mountains. I think it was forecast to be clear now, but it's literally just started snowing or at least hail or something, but it's definitely ice blowing straight into my face. Apart from that, it's fantastic, moody, dramatic conditions. I mean, look at the light behind me there. That's just fantastic. And then you spin around this way and it's kind of, oh, it's got a kind of Lord of the Rings, you shall not pass feel to it. I think what I need to do is try and find a spot to set up camp. Uh, and just hope that this stops and it blows over. <laughs> ah, brutal at the moment though. Whoa. It's like the middle of winter. Ah. I am a man who likes his seasons. In the winter, I love snow. I love being cold. I love the cold. I never really get cold. But in the spring, in the summer, I want it to be warm. Ah, so... I'm having a little whinge at the moment because of that. This is not what you expect at the end of April. Oh my God. Right, let's grab the bag and get off the top here. Try and, oh, it's so heavy. Try and find a spot before, oh, before this gets too bad. You hear that wind as well. Oh. Oh, I'm not going to lie, that was absolutely brutal. <sighs> and really, I'm not particularly looking forward to the sleep tonight. I was expecting clear skies, and the weather forecast still says that, but I'm in the mountains, so this should, this is to be expected really, but it doesn't make it any more fun. Oh, I think what is going to raise my spirits is having some hot food. It's so cold as well. Staying dry is the main thing I'm worried about. <laughs> Although, if it just keeps snowing, I guess I'm less likely to get wet, I don't know. I think part of the title for this video was alone in the mountains. And at the moment, <laughs> I'm acutely aware that I am alone in the mountains. It's kind of, kind of exhilarating on the one hand, but a little bit lonely on the other hand. It's brightening up over there though, I think. All right, let's get this food on. That is possibly the best tasting bit of food I've had in a long, long time. And it's just a, <laughs> just a really crappy chili and rice. Such a morale booster though. Well, good morning. This is my absolute favorite moment. Waking up in the mountains on your own 
with just beautiful sights all around. And there is just no better place in the world to wake up than on top of a hill, on top of a mountain. <laughs> it was an interesting night. I, uh, I didn't get much sleep and I've woken up to just ice all over my bag, all over the tent. But happily, I was really quite snug in my, uh, in my sleeping bag. So I'm gonna wait for the sun to come up over the hill there and then see what I can do. Right, so I made it to the top and things have taken a bit of a turn for the worse because the rain is just relentlessly heavy and the worst thing about it all is that I'm up on the moors now right at the top nothing around me at all and there are thunderstorms forecast I've got to be on the top for probably about an hour it's a really tricky decision to make because it looks like the weather is going to clear up in about 45 minutes but before that it's going to get heavier uh, as you might be able to tell on the lens uh, I think I might wait here just at the top of the hill see what happens and if I, can need, if I need to I can dart back down and hide under a rock <laughs> so frustrating though I've still got a long way to go and time is pressing on it's mid afternoon now we've got about five or six hours left of light and yeah quite a way to go especially if I want to do some photography at the same time oh, oh it's so wet and with not having the waterproof trousers as well my legs are soaked and if I stand around for too long I get cold <laughs> yeah pretty brutal now I had in mind today to make it a full day adventure cook some nice food show that on the video but now it's just a case of getting some food on board so I can think straight have the energy to keep pressing on uh, so I'm just eating this all day breakfast straight out of the packet completely cold see that it's not actually as bad as it sounds just any food at this stage it's gonna give me a boost <laughs> It. Hearing rumbles of thunder coming from the top there, so I'm gonna hightail it back off this moor. I was in the middle of eating this uh, pretty plasticky chocolate pudding, but it could give me energy I need to get back down out of here. Oh no, don't feel good about this. Feels like I'm giving up. I'm making the right choice, I don't know. Right, I've got down off the top now, but I'm still not really in the clear. Oh, it's very frustrating because I kind of feel like it's in a in about half an hour it's either going to be full thunder and lightning or completely sunny uh, and I just don't know which way it's going to go. And when I was back at the top my rational brain was telling me it was going to be absolutely fine. I was feeling the fear a little bit but my gut was telling me it's going to be absolutely fine. But <laughs> few rumbles of thunder going around now kind of coming from over that direction and my rational brain is now telling me it's 50 50 uh, I don't think fucking hell did you hear that <laughs> I'm sorry uh, but these videos are not worth a 50 50 risk It's frustrating with thunder and lightning when you're out and about though because it just doesn't feel <laughs> your sort of gut tells you that you're just never going to get struck by lightning but <clears throat> one time on this video here I was almost caught in a thunderstorm but I was by the coast and I was near my car just after I finished filming the video a fork of lightning struck the car park floor about five meters from my car now I was in my car so I was protected and stuff but 
the sheer force and the sheer power of the thing and the noise it created was unbelievable. So I, uh, I do have full respect for it. Nature is out to get us is one thing that I've learned. We have become very, very comfortable in our modern lives, protected from nature, as it were. Uh, and I think many people have forgotten that it can actually <laughs> kill you. So yeah, I think uh, that's my mindset at the moment, but I've just probably added another few kilometers to my walk though. And my back is struggling too, so. Right, so I'm set up for my final image of the day on the side of this rather beautiful reservoir. And <laughs> I'm planning on doing a panoramic long exposure photograph. Now I've done this once before on the channel and that was on the south bank of London. Now that is a spot where you usually get turfed away when you set a tripod up, but I had the tripod fully set up. I was filming, doing all sorts, no one came and saw me. I didn't ask permission, I just did it. And I think sometimes you just need to do that. I got the shot and this is the image here. It worked out pretty well, but there were some difficulties because there were six minutes each. So things changed within that time, obviously. And there was a little bit of a problem stitching some of the water together and some of the clouds, but I did manage to do it in the end. I think it's a pretty effective image. And that is probably gonna be the same problem I have here. Now the cloud is nice and there's a little bit of color in the sky and you get that lovely reflection, but I just don't think there's enough interest there. But the bank at the other side, there's a lot more detail in there. There's a lot more shape and form in there, which I really like. And that's why I am using the 20, no, what is it? A 70 to 200 lens to zoom in on that. It also makes the panorama a bit easier because I can use this uh, lens mount and it spins around that point so you don't get any parallax shift technical stuff that doesn't really matter but it is going to be as close as i can get it to technically perfect i think also what i'm going to do is that the clouds or the wind are blowing the clouds that way across the sky so if i start on the left with the first shot second shot in the middle third shot on the right travel with the clouds it may have an easier time of stitching it together. There's not much wind, so they're not moving very fast. It also means that I think the water is going to remain pretty constant throughout all three images. It's the light changing as well. It's going to be a challenge and we're right at sunset now. So the, it may get warmer and more color in the sky as I go. So lots of technical challenges here, which I quite enjoy. I usually do my panoramas vertical, but I'm going to do it horizontal because well, I don't want to be stood here all day. I'm at F8, ISO 100, and I'm going to do it for, if I just turn the bulb timer on here, one minute and 19 seconds, which it's not going to be super long. It's not as long as the one we did earlier on. It's just going to be enough to smooth that water out and put a little bit of subtle movement in the clouds, which will help it also then stitch together, I think. Will it? I don't know. Let's find out. Right, first one, that's going to be the middle shot. So let's go there two second timer and there we go one minute 19 seconds later i'll do the next one and then the next one yeah it's been difficult with the weather recently it's been a strange time for me moving out of the office and uh readjusting to that it's now the summer holidays my kids are at home all the time as well which is great on the one hand but it makes me not want to work really so yeah very strange time lots going on anyway i'll show you that image now
Shit. I've just crashed the drone. Uh, I'm assuming I didn't have it quite high enough. And it's just gone into the heather there, but... Oh man, I hope I can find it. Crashed it a couple of times before, but I always knew where it was. The heather's so long. Oh no. I have to have a proper good search around. I can't see it anywhere. Although the phone says it's disconnected, I think the controller is still connected, so maybe if I try and spin it up, I'll be able to hear it. Oh, what was that? In the heather. Oh, I think we might, might be okay. The heather must have proved a fairly soft landing. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, that is a relief. I cannot afford a new drone. Right, I've, uh, I've mucked up because the walk I had planned today is physically not possible. So I'd planned to be at the other side of the uh, stream, like I said, because that's the side the light is on, that's the side the evening light's on. This side of the valley is in shadow now, so... <laughs> Uh, I'm having to adjust my plan a little bit, and that is the reality of doing landscape photography, and I want to share that when I can on these videos. So what I've done is sort of climbed up onto the moor, where there's, we're in the middle of this rather beautiful heather, so not quite the image I had planned, but it's going to be nice. I think it's still a nice view behind there. Uh, we've got the heather in the foreground, camera set up, as you can see, and I'm going to try and make the best of it. And at this final stage of the day, about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so before sunset, I am reminded that, I'm reminded about what matters because the piece of gear that we buy, that new camera that we buy, will only provide a sense of fulfillment for a very short space of time. The thing that provides us with meaning and fulfillment is getting out into the landscape, getting out into nature and hopefully being artistic, creating something, doing something, being physically active and hopefully at the end of the day capturing a nice photograph. That's the stuff that matters, that's the stuff we need uh, and I think that is a message that I'm constantly trying to remind myself of uh, and if it's sort of feeds through to you as well and inspires you to get out and do your own bit of landscape photography then all the better for it because <laughs> it is just fantastic and whilst today has not gone to plan and I wanted to be over there I didn't need to be over there I'm gonna be just as satisfied capturing something just here Right, got up early to come for sunrise. I don't know if you can see, but over on the horizon there, there's just a huge bank of cloud. And that's where the sun's coming from. I was partially hoping for a cloud inversion coming from over there as well, which is kind of where I'm heading to take a photograph. But uh, I just don't think anything's gonna happen, which is very disappointing. Cause I put the effort in twice now and I've got absolutely nowhere. The frustrating thing as well is there is actually some really interesting cloud around. So if there was the sun coming from over there behind you, that'd be fantastic. But let's head up to the edge and then just be a little bit patient and see what develops because things can change. I'm gonna stay optimistic until the last moment. Oh, actually, there's some lovely cloud down in the valley there. 
how quickly a mood can change. Oh wow, let's get down there. God. God, I'm super excited now. <laughs> Isn't that daft? You just go from uh, the depths of despair to total elation. <laughs> For me, I don't know about you, but for me, that is my experience of landscape photography. It's all or nothing. And I sort of really struggle to get, really struggle to get a kind of stoic attitude towards it. <laughs> Very emotional when it comes to my photography. Right, here we go. <laughs> Well, this is a crazy morning. I've just been shooting a panorama. I'm gonna do it again in a minute, but as I was, the mist has just rolled in all around me. I don't know if you can see down there, you can see behind me there. Over there, I think is really interesting. I think, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I have just captured a very quick panorama there because I love Kind of, there was a bit of colour in the sky, I love the mist down in the valley and there's mist just rolling in all around me now so I don't quite know where to go. I love it over there, I think it's really moody. Let's just do this real time because uh, I think I want you to get an impression of <laughs> kind of what it's like on mornings like this and how manic it can get. But as soon as... Uh, oh no, <laughs> tripod all over the place. There we go. Look. It's changed so quickly. This is not right now. It's just po pretty much total mist over there now. But I still do like it. But it looks... <laughs> the rock here just behind me here looks good now. That was uninteresting before, but now that mist has rolled in, it's created a really bit of interesting separation. It's the speed at which it's changing is overwhelming. Uh, so... Right, I'm gonna go and get the, uh, the 16 to 35, grab a quick shot over here. And because the cloud is now rolling in over the hills over there, I'm then gonna come back here. But uh, I need to be working so fast. It's pretty cold as well, so I'm struggling with my hands. Right, this is ridiculous. I mean, you can see how much the weather is changing because you, are fogging up because I put you down on the ground for a second. Right. Oh my god, this is <laughs> virtually impossible. Right. Third position. Still no good photo, I don't think. Look at the conditions behind me. I mean, I'm gonna probably come away with some amazing stuff today. Oh, absolutely nothing. This looks quite nice. Let's just shoot that. I just feel desperate to get something in the can. My God, you probably think I'm an absolute idiot right now. I've abandoned my bag over there. Uh, right, I'm gonna show you that image. Goodness me. You can see how challenging the weather conditions are because it's fogging up this lens anyway. I hope that's not happening to this one. Let's have a quick check. Oh, it is as well. Let's fire off one more shot and then I'll show you that image. <laughs> <laughs> right, well I hope you liked that image. I've got to say, this is one of the most chaotic photo shoots I have ever done, I think. I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just surrounded by mist now though. And it's coming in, th in thick waves and then it's easing back. And then you've got a great photo opportunity. But by the time I've moved to that location to photograph it, it's gone again. It's clearing up again behind me there now. But I know the second I turn my camera around, it's gonna be very lovely over here again. So let's wait, let's be patient and see if something comes that way. Right, let's flick into manual mode and do that. Yeah, I mean, that is quite a nice little composition with some of the rocks 
in the foreground here in a bit of that heather yeah that's pretty lovely actually let's tilt down a little bit more now at f11 one eighth of a second and iso 100 i was at f8 when i was sh shooting that way oh it's turning into a full inversion now look you can see the sky above <laughs> the cloud below but there really isn't much to shoot there at the moment uh let me yeah i really like it this way because i've got a rock down in the foreground here and then some of the heather the heather in distance the light in the sky and it's starting to clear up now and then you've got the subtle curves in the hills just here is the chaos coming across i'm sure it is color over there color over there a bit of color where i'm actually pointing now i think possibly my patience may pay off here fog is moving in again now almost totally surrounded again but the light is dancing around the scenes every time there's a little gap in the cloud the scene explodes and i want to photograph it but the speed at which it's changing i've got to say there's only one or two other occasions when i've ever experienced anything like this and like i say i think it's certainly the most chaotic video i've ever done right i'll show you that image and then i'm gonna set up again even these rocks look incredible in the mist here <laughs> right see what you think I don't need a YouTube channel for me. I'm just going to have a YouTube channel following you. <laughs> just, I love it. Look at it. Look at that. Oh, shimmering and dancing light on that. And the, it's so delicate. I like the vibrant green, the moss. Oh, it's actually, it's working quite zoomed in on the end. Yeah, that moss is really, really flashing, isn't it? Really bright. But look at it. Oh, there. That's it. <laughs> the light. Oh. What a tree! What a beautiful tree! Oh my goodness! All right, it's just, wins. it's in. just so I'm simple. In. Look, in. look at that! Look at the light! It's right now! Oh my goodness! Like that crescendo, that like I've been calling it confetti, haven't I? Oh, that's gorgeous! But I like yeah. the way that this is kind of rustic and brown. But they're connecting. They're almost shaking hands. Like it's reaching in. So there, it, it's reaching in from that top corner, and I quite like that. See, that would annoy me. Really, would yeah, it? Yeah, I'd be like, oh, I feel like it would take me out the frame. Ah, not bringing you in, but it takes you away. Yeah, ah, right. but when I see it big, it might change. We can have a look, so. I f I f it feels like it's, it's, it's just coming in mm. enough to be part of it, to, to almost, we, is it another tree? It's still a part of the other tree. No, I know what you mean. Mm. Look at the ground though. Positivity. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. feel like it's one of those mornings where this mist and fog is going to be extremely fleeting but it is due to get sunny so I think there's gonna suddenly be some awesome light as well but I want to get one in the can to get me started so what I'm doing is just using that view there I was attracted to this tree 
this one here, because they are surrounded by this beautiful autumnal fern or bracken. It, which is it? Is it fern or bracken? I don't know. But it looks nice in the foreground of the images. Then we go up into the detail of the bark and the texture of the tree, and then into the wood, into the fog, into the distance, providing some nice depth and separation from the background. Things I always look for in my woodland photography. It's then just a sort of case of trying to decide where in the frame you're going to place all the elements because what woodland photography is all about is trying to look into that chaos of the woodland and pick out the certain forms that are going to produce the most appealing composition or image. It's a lot easier said than done though, a lot easier. Uh, and that's why the fog works, because it provides some separation and the forms become a little bit simpler. But at the moment, I'm at f11, one fifth of a second, and I've upped the ISO to 320, because I just want to allow for that slightly faster shutter speed. Let's have a quick look at that. I think that's really rather nice to start the day. I was completely wrong earlier. I thought this mist and fog was gonna lift, but in fact, I think it's got thicker and uh, the light or the sun rather is actually reasonably high in the sky now, but the conditions are still absolutely stunning. And I'm photographing a set of trees that I have seen so many times and never had the right conditions for, but today is that day. And these are the trees just here. Now the other week on, the vid on a video, I talked about the beauty of panorama photography and particularly printing it. But I'm gonna do a panorama right now because I love this full set of trees, but I don't want too much of the sky in uh, and it's quite a wide vista. So I'm going to do a panorama of them. I went through the whole process on the video the other week of how I do panoramas. Talked about the nodal point, how many pictures I take, how much to go in by each time and then how I process them and print them. So do check that video out. I think it's a really good one and not many people seem to see it. So uh, I'm just going around and doing this. The light on those trees is beautiful. It's sort of side lit, which is just fantastic. So I'm going around as quickly as I can at F11, 130 per second, ISO 100. I particularly love the separation from the background as it goes into that mist, into the wood, as I'm sort of stood on the edge of the wood, I mean, just look at the uh, all the spider webs and cobwebs and the light on the trees. <sighs> just awesome conditions today. I'm absolutely loving it. So I think just a couple more shots now, and then I'll, well, let's just do it. Let's go around and finish those up, and then I'll put that image up for you. It's almost feeling too easy, which makes me think every time I feel like that, that I'm messing it up. And I'm gonna get back and the picture's gonna be rubbish, uh, but I'm, fairly confident that's not going to be the case today, like hopefully with this one here. almost struggling for words this morning because I have, out of the blue, stumbled across this stunning winter wonderland. We've got snow, we've got a hoarfrost, we've got some interesting light around and I want to make something good of it, something print worthy, but I just don't know where to begin. <laughs> I've set up for a shot and it feels like one of those days where 
the conditions are going to disappear. And that's kind of feeding into my sort of anxiety, like that I need to get something straight away. So I've really rushed down here to this little spot. And it's one of the things that's good about scouting an area out is when you then do have conditions like this, you have a few ideas in your head. And that is luckily what I have. So I knew about this spot and I've come straight here. It does look incredible. We've got this lake here and it's just super flat. There's some lovely reflections. The trees look incredible. Uh, and there was some ducks uh, hanging out a second ago. So I've captured a kind of really subtle wide image of this whole scene. I then got in a little bit closer with the 7200 that I have on here and got in with the ducks with some of these trees to the side kind of framing them. What I'm waiting for though is this, when I arrived here there was a lovely little outcrop. You might be able to see it just in the distance there. That was producing a really nice form very simple with an almost like a triangle coming in from the side almost negative space around it being created by the water and the sky and it's all very white and very beautiful and very clean and that's what i love about it however the fog's got a bit thicker since i've set up and that opportunity doesn't exist at the moment and also as that was happening some of the sky or the cloud above cleared a little bit, little bit and there was some warmth in it as well so the temptation is to move on and try and capture something else. But the problem is where I am is everywhere is quite a big walk between the different compositions that I have in mind. So I think what I'm gonna do is wait for a little while, enjoy this moment. I've got this whole place to myself, this whole winter wonderland to myself. <sighs> what a morning. scouting always pays off and this is the tree that I was talking about and here I am talking about this tree in the type of conditions where I think it would look good and now that I've got to nearly the top of the hill come across this tree which I think is probably a bit better looking than the one I photographed back down there with virtually the same background. I'm tempted to shoot it but I don't think I'm going to because I think with the shape of that trunk and a bit of the muddy patch around the bottom of it that tree is going to be perfect when it's full of frost or full of snow now from that you can see today i was pretty much right i think it looks beautiful the snow on the tree and that messy patch of mud is now covered with just a small patch of water which i actually think looks really nice at the base of the tree you can see some of the grass and the moss in amongst the base of that tree but <laughs> As I was capturing an image, I'm just going to keep shooting because the sun's moving around all the time, the light's changing. But I've come to the realisation that I've done it the wrong way around. If I'd come up here first and shot this tree, there would have been mist. The light would have been just breaking through the cloud and looking really warm and lovely. And then after I'd done that, I then could have gone down to the reservoir and captured the image I wanted to as the mist cleared, because it cleared there second and here first. As you can see behind me there, I think it still looks very beautiful. But the, I think the thing damaging the image a little bit is that it, there's no separation from the background. But the mist is coming in again. Look at that over there. Oh no, I'm going to have to switch lenses. Ah. <laughs> these conditions, these conditions are just absolutely crazy. Right, I've, I've definitely caught some... Oh no, it's going to disappear. Not good for the camera. Not good for the camera, but it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Canon. <laughs> Sorry, Canon. Quickly switch around. Oh no, it's going again. Get rid of that. <laughs> oh no, I don't know. 
I don't know if I got it. And just like that, the moment is gone. <laughs> it's one of those days where I'm feeling like an idiot. <laughs> feeling like I'm totally mucking it up. But I've had these days before on occasions like this when the conditions are so good that the images I have captured are still really quite good. And I suspect that might happen today, but it's just, <laughs> there's always that little annoyance in the back of your mind that you could have done something even better. Uh, but that is the problem with uh, aiming for perfection, isn't it? Is that it doesn't exist and it's the enemy of good. Right, now I've calmed down a little bit. I'll put those two images up on the screen. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, it was worth waiting. I did say the fog was forecast to come back and it has done. Look how it has transformed that tree. That is now picturesque, separated from, from the background, looking absolutely epic. As the mist moves around, you can then see some in the background, but I'm shifting positions, moving around, shooting the tree from different angles to try and get the very best of it. I'm actually struggling to see a little bit into the viewfinder because it's so bright out here. The sun's right above and bouncing off and I don't have very good eyes anyway as long time viewers will know and it's when it's very bright seeing into the shadow is what I really struggle with the most. So yeah, but I mean I know that is looking fantastic. I'm excited. I know I've now got the image. Ah, yes. <laughs> 